What is up YouTube? That's it here and today I'm proud to be bringing you guys a brand new VGC 2020 Season 5 rental team. This one's gonna be featuring our boy Emolga. Emolga is a very underrated Pokemon. It gets moves like Taunt and Encore and it has the amazing 103 base speed stat to pull it all off. Uh, Emolga, you know, like I said, Taunt and Encore are very uncommon. You see a lot of Pokemon just get Taunt or just get Encore and even the ones that get Taunt and Encore usually don't have an above base 100 speed. So that makes Emolga super premium to pair with Pokemon like Mamoswine. We can go EQ Discharge. To pair with Pikachu, we can go Discharge, activate our Pikachu's Lightning Rod, and slam in super strong Light Ball boosted max moves. To pair with X or Lou, the same EQ Discharge combo. Also, Motor Drive means if you pair the Pikachu with the Emolga, Pikachu can also Discharge and give Emolga more speed boost thanks to the Motor Drive ability. Emolga is super fun, and I want to direct you guys to the question of the day, and that is, how good do you think Emolga is for VGC. Hopefully by the by the end of these games I can actually show you that this Pokemon does need to be respected. You can't sleep on Emolga. It has a uh, potential for air slash. That is for air streams ladies and gentlemen. Being able to air stream is super underrated. So let me know what you think about Emolga. Let me know what you think about this team. If you want to see more YouTube specific content like this let me know in the comments below. We're going to get right on into the games. Here we go. All right, going up into our very first game. Man, that Raichu is going to be annoying for all of our Lightning Rod users, but, you know, it's pretty slim, easy pickings, right? For our Mamoswine, for our uh, Excadrill. We can also use our Lightning Rod users to protect uh, that Raichu. Sorry, to protect our Gyarados from that Raichu. So let's actually see. Man, I really wish I actually had room for Energy Ball in this Emolga so I could punish the Seismitoad. But I'm assuming the Seismitoad... It might be water absorb. It's kind of hard to say. Let's see. Alkazam is fast, 120 base speed. Uh, Cinderace, 119, pretty fast. Raichu, 110, pretty fast. Always look at your opponent's speed tierings and be able to, you know, read those correctly. Do I need fake outs? Uh, he has a faster fake out in Raichu. Let's actually see. I think I want to go with like an EQ esque type board. I think I actually would like to go for uh, a Tailwind EQ board, as weird as that sounds. But I, I really want to use a Molga. I think a Molga is like the team's big win condition. I think it'd be a lot of fun to use Emolga. Hmm, this is such a hard turn. Like, I could totally just go Talonflame and probably Exodrill and win this one. You know, I'll just do that for now. <laughs> let's just do that for now. Let's go Talonflame and the big E Exodrill. Now, let's see. If he goes Raichu and wants to fake up my Talonflame to stop uh, Tailwind and then he goes for, like, a Cinderace play and my Exodrill, we have to bring something to switch into. So, that's where we bring our Gyarados. And I think last but not least, I want a second EQ user. And so, I'll bring Memeswine there. And so just be ready in case he brings that Cinderace Raichu weed, because Cinderace Raichu is still super, super strong. Uh, I, You know, they both get dumpstered by Earthquake if you use it correctly. But through the use of Fake Out, they can stop my Talonflame Speed Control. And uh, we'll really see what we're going for here. We're not bringing the Pikachu for Lightning Rod. Uh, we're not bringing the Emolga for Motor Drive. And remember, guys, Motor Drive is different from Lightning Rod. Motor Drive, sure, it absorbs the attack. It gives you a speed boost. But what it doesn't do is redirect the attack. So he's leading exactly the same like I talked about. That is his best lead in the situation. Uh, once you guys start playing more Pokemon, you're going to you're gonna start to realize what your opponent's leads are going to do. You guys always get asked me this question. That's a how do you know what they're going to lead. I know what they're going to lead because I know what my team says that it does. I know that for this guy... He needs fake out us. Uh, he already has the right of way with his fake out speed tearing. He's a faster fake outer than me. He has faster overall Pokemon than me. So he's in a very, very good spot here. Uh, I do think that we should probably be. Like, I kind of want to. There's a couple things I could actually do here. I think I am going to try and Tailwind. And I just wonder if he could one shot my Exadrill. I really wonder. Because, like, I could switch in Gyarados here. I could. I think I'm actually just going to risk it. I think I'm just going to go for the Tailwind and just an EQ. I think I'm going to actually just risk it for the biscuit all the way up. Uh, this is such a greedy EQ. I'm sure that he's going to be Dynamaxing these Cinderace, right? I'm sure of it. But let's see if he's fake outing my Talonflame. If I have protect on this Talonflame... Actually, guys, we're using a Choice Banded Talonflame that still actually has, uh, like, Tailwind on it. Remember, we do have Gale Wings, so we do have a Priority Tailwind right now. But it's not, it's only a Priority 1. It's not Priority 3. So Cinderace, if he can stop my Speed Control, is going to be absolutely... Cinderace tear on a hole through me. Let's see it. Survey says Tailwind. Looks like he's going to be eating the damage. My greed. This was all greed, by the way. This was him assuming that I would protect my Talon Flame. This was him assuming pretty much everything. And for that, he's going to get his Sash Clock on his right shoe. I already have the speed control. It doesn't matter what you do to me here. It, it seriously matters not what you want to do to me here. Uh, Max Nuck, you can go for that. You can totally go for that. I think he thought that I was going to go for like a very defensive play and try and like wait out his protect. Uh, sorry, not protect. Um, his fake outs. 
But I was like, I'm forcing you to fake out. And even if you fake up my Talon Flame and hit my Extra Drill, what uh, that's done is it's made me been able to analyze what your Dynamax is going to be. Like, uh, are you Dynamax for the center race? Yes or no. Uh, is your Raichu sashed or vested? Yes or no. Is your Raichu, sorry, is your Cinder Race going to be a fighting type, a flying type? What type is your Cinder Race going to be? Yes or no. He goes for the Encore there, right? So he's he knew I was going to do that. Now let's actually see, but I do have the speed control, so let's actually, I think you want to bring up the Mammoth Swine here. I think, yeah, Mammoth Swine, because we're using a full uh, Jolly set, a full speed Mammoth Swine set, so we are going to be able to double out speed here. Uh, I actually could Dynamax the Talon Flame, but I think we're going to switch it out, right? Yeah, we're going to switch it out for the Gyarados, and there we go, switch that one out, and just go for another EQ. Yo, the power of Earthquake, guys, the power of Earthquake, boys and girls, it's pretty strong. Uh, I talked about that Raichu being an issue, being able to, you know... Uh, limit my ability to use my electric types, but you know, if you're double weak against ground, that's sometimes how the cookie crumbles, right? So, big Cinderace, uh, we're using our Gyarados here. Remember, we don't have uh, Intimidate, we're using a Moxie Gyarados here, and we also haven't Dynamaxed yet. That's one thing that's actually really, really important. I talked about what his lead was going to be, I talked about how I was going to deal with it, and I dealt with it in a way that didn't cost me my Dynamax. And I think that's one thing that players should be getting to. Like, that's one thing that we do on this channel that makes the game look a lot easier than it is. Uh, dealing with their Dynamaxes without having to use your own. Yes, I went for an incredibly greedy turn one play that could have lost me my Talon Flame, and maybe even a little bit more. But what it didn't do was lose me my Dynamax. Dynamax is the miracle maker, and it is exactly what makes this format tick. It's so, so important. And if you waste your Dynamax like your opponent just did, there's like almost no way to come back. Uh, let's actually think what we want to do here. Uh, I don't actually have to do that much. I think I will be Dynamaxing my, uh, what is it? I'm going to be Dynamaxing my Mammoth Swine here because we are, uh, Assault Vested. Not Assault Vested, sorry. We are Weakness Policy, so we can totally just Dynamax this guy all the way up. And he's going to proc our Dynamax with that Scizor using a Bullet Punch most likely. And then from there, Appleton's a great Pokemon, but like, doesn't want to fight Mammoth Swine and Talonflame and Gyarados. So we'll see. Uh, I might also... No, my Mammoth Swine should be just a little bit slower. But guys, remember, Mammoth Swine is 80 base speed, whereas Gyarados is 81. Since we're using Jolly variants of both of these, Gyarados should still be outspeeding my Mammoth Swine. And, you know, we've actually been planning on using Mammoth Swine for a while. I think this is a pretty good team to actually showcase it. Like, EQ Discharge, that's the sauce. So show me that Bullet Punch. Protect Appleton. That's completely fine. I would love it if you uh, showed me that Bullet Punch. Show it to me. Show me! Waterfall. All right, so you're gone then, right? So that's how that one works, right? You're gonna take that big damage there, and they're gonna be slamming in a max quake. I don't know if you might not die. That's a very, very bulky scissor. I wonder if it's pocking like a pinch berry. Nope. Mammoth Swine, so strong, boys and girls. That's one thing. Mammoth Swine is actually very similar to Gyarados in that regard. They have really, really high attack stats, right? Uh, I think Gyarados rocks like that 130, and I think Mammoth Swine walk, rocks like a 130, 135 as well. But they usually use moves that are like a lot weaker, right? Gyarados uses like a lot of waterfalls and crunches, right? Whereas Mammoth Swine also uses like icicle crashes. They don't use moves that are in the 110s, 120s, 130s. So when you actually Dynamax them, they become super, super good. Uh, it doesn't really matter what move we use. So I actually want to go for Crunch, get a defense drop. It's our neutral, uh, it's a neutral damaging attack. You don't want to go for Bounce because the Protect is going to be up this turn. So next turn you'll be able to Protect. And you just want to go for a Max Hailstorm. Pick up the win. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. That's how we do it, boys and girls. Battle was canceled, and we take the wins in the quickest game of all time, right? We didn't get to use Emolga, but uh, we didn't even need to use Emolga, right? Y Emolga would have been overkill, in my opinion. Like, we actually didn't even need Gyarados in that situation. We only brought the Gyarados in case the Cinderace matchup got out of control. Like, if I would have really been threatened by that Cinderace, um, I would have switched out the extra drill for Gyarados, blocked some of that damage, because uh, he did go for the Max Nuck. He was going to go for Max Nuck, or uh, Max Flare, and Gyarados would have blocked both those. And that's why Gyarados is on the team. It's one of the only defensive pivots this team actually has to regain board control. You don't even have to actually run it as a Moxie Gyarados. You can, but like, Intimidate Gyarados would also do a really, really good job here. All right, so we're going to be going up against James Beck. I'm just recording this video for YouTube. He's going to absolutely dumpster me. You can tell my team is not necessarily up to snuff. I wonder if that's actually a Sash Tarakion. A lot of the uh, a lot of us old school players realize that Sash Tarakion is the sauce. It was a sauce although back in 2011. It's just because now he's probably recording a video or streaming right now. I wonder which one of it is. Either way, go check out James B1, otherwise known as James Beck on YouTube. Uh, on, on Twitch, it'll be probably, if this, if this actually ends up making it to YouTube, I will link all of his stuff because he is the best content creator for Pokemon. But now that's out of the way, how do I want to deal with this, right? I have to flex on him, don't I? I have to flex. Like, I have to, have to flex. So what's the most flexy flex 
I think I'm just gonna go Emoga Pikachu. And if he actually brings something like really good, if he brings like that Trakion, well, I will, I've lived a full life, chat. Chat, I have actually lived a full life, believe it or not. Um, I think Talonflame is actually really nice versus this team. So let's do it. Let's go. Oh my gosh, this is not going to go well. This is not going to go well. I wonder if he's streaming. Like, I seriously wonder if he's streaming. It's currently Sunday when I'm recording this. It's Sunday at 3.44 p.m. Normally when I like to make these exclusive for YouTube videos, I make them the day before. That way, if there's anything I have to talk about, if there's anything influencing the meta, you know, it's relevant, right? It's relevant content. I'm making these. I'm going to make this. I'm going to edit the thumbnail. I'm going to edit the video. I'm going to upload it. And it's going to go live at 5 a.m. every single morning. Drop the subs if you haven't, guys. Let's go. And I actually have a battle against James that I'm supposed to play probably sometime within a couple days where we use, like, real teams. But let's see. Uh, oh, my gosh. I wonder how this is going to go down. Porygon Z and Cinderor. So this is actually my plan. Uh, I, I actually didn't talk about my plan because normally I don't talk about my secret plans. Because I always figure I'm going to get sniped. But since he can't snipe me. And not that he would. But people in chat would tell him. No one has any idea what I'm doing. So the idea here is. He's going to be fake outing my Emolga. Correct? He will be fake outing my Emolga. Because Pikachu will be Dynamaxing. That's exactly what he thinks. So what if we didn't do that? Like what if we actually just went. And airstreamed that, that Porygon Z. Using a stabbed airstream by the way. Like a stab Arena to airstream. And then I think I want to discharge. Like I kind of want to play for like that. You see what I'm doing there? I could also probably just go for, like, a Discharge Omolga into, like, a really, really big Pikachu turn. Hold on, what if I did it, like, hold on, what if I did it like this? I'm gonna actually try this. I'm gonna Max Lightning with my Omolga, right? And that will give my Pikachu a special attack boost, and then I can one-shot the Porygon Z. No, I think actually just going for a Thunder and an Airstream is better. Or, I, actually, can't I just taunt that? Ah, uh, this is such a hard play. I'll Airstream. And I'll go for a Thunder. Actually, I'll Airstream and go for a Fake Out. That's actually a little bit cleaner. Yeah, I can just go for a Fake Out. All right, Amoga's up, boys and girls. The big Amoga energy. Yeah, I forgot that Pikachu had Fake Out, right? I forgot Pikachu had Fake Out. Fake Out's pretty good. I'm pretty sure he's going to be Trick Rooming me. And if he's not, like, well, he's going to be an Airstream. Look at that Amoga. It's so sick. Yo, someone has to do it. Yo, Airstream Amoga is so dope. This Pokemon is amazing. Amazing! And we're going to be going fast. Uh-oh. All right, he read me. <laughs> He's not going Trick Room, and I will lose. Is that Big PZ? He's going into Pikachu. That's completely fine. Like, that's actually pretty fine. Because we just want to be able to preserve our Emolga, right? That's kind of how this goes. So we'll see. He has to be fake out in the Emolga and nuking the Pikachu with the Porygon. And Porygon and Pikachu speed tie. So it's like, I wonder how this is going to go down. Yeah, we already knew who was fake out in that one. There's the airstream. And so this is going to make my Pikachu faster. If it would actually live through stuff. <laughs> if I would have actually been able to live. But anyways, uh, Emolga is faster. So that means next turn when I airstream, I'm going to go quite fast. I wonder if he's like ice beaming my Emolga. Max strike. Yep, so someone's getting nuked. Alright, bye-bye. Hey, I didn't waste my Dynamax, chat. Chat, Dynamax not wasted. And since I airstreamed, I'm still faster. So that means when I send something out to punish that Porygon... Punish it. And he's orbed. Okay. I wonder if he's going to play like Big Protect play. Uh, I think he just go Exit Drill here. Uh, Exit Drill or Talent Flame are also like really good. I think I'm just going to send the Exit Drill out and go for an Airstream boost. He can Protect and try to like Flare Blitz. I guess. Let me actually think about that. What if I nuked the Incineroar to get off the board? What if I went like Airstream into the Incineroar? Because you can't block that, right? And just in, in EQ. Decent damage. Uh, we'll be able to take out the Incineroar for sure. And if he switches... Yeah, we'll see. I think you disrespect Porygon this turn. He's withdrawing Incineroar. Come on, man! Don't... He could have just protected the Porygon and hit my Exodrill. Alright, that's fine. Clefairy's actually a really cool play. So we're going to be able to get the Clefairy off the board. And he's Max Guarding. So this is actually a really, really good play for me. Uh, like I said, you ignore the Porygon to this turn. So that means I'm straight popping it off right now. That's a lot of damage versus this Clefairy. It's almost like I play the game. And I don't know if Clefairy can actually eat... And extra drill, like the big extra drill damage. I don't know if you actually can. Survey says live for boys and girls rocking the big EQ. The big EQ. Almost. That's actually a lot of damage. All right, so let's actually think about how I need to handle this. I wonder if it's gonna follow me or airstream. I'm, I'm actually curious what I should be doing here. I think I'm going to airstream the Porygon and still EQ. 
But I kind of want to, like... Because the airstream's going to get mitigated. I'm actually just going to protect my extra. this turn and airstream the Porygon. And then we're not going to kill the Clefairy. And then next turn, I'm going to go for a Discharge to finish it off. Yeah. Protect the extra. Make sure it doesn't die. Follow me. It's completely fair. Uh, I think I'm going to be switching out my extra next turn. Let's see, though. So he fodders the Clefairy. He's going to be able to bring out the Incineroar again. Incineroar should be fake-outing my Exodil next turn, I think. And this is his last turn Dynamax. We're at plus two speed, so we're always going to be able to outspeed these guys. Even when he max... She's probably going to max striking my Molgo. Really? You're ignoring my boy Exodil? Oh, he hit the Exodil. Yo, I'm so good! It's almost like I played the game. I can't believe we max strike that. Um, yeah, I'll definitely block that damage. He's disrespecting our Amolga chat. Have you seen him disrespect us? All right, and he's taking a lot more orb damage. So he's going to be able to fake out my Exodrill here. And we're intimidated now, but he's not max anymore. So let's actually see what I want to do. I think I'm going to just Encore the Incineroar here. And I'm, I might just... Because he's going to fake out someone, correct? He's going to fake out my Exodrill, I think. And if he Trick Rooms... Well, I have Talonflame ready to go in the back and can one-shot. So that looks like that's what we're going to do here. Like, I could taunt the Porygon if he wants to trick room me. Is he actually running, like, a trick room of both team? He has probably Rotom, Corviknight, Tarakion in the back. I think I will Encore the Incineroar, because I think he's fake-outing the Exodil slot. I'm still going to EQ. This uh, covers if he doesn't want to fake-out me. Are you fake-out in my Amolga? All right, cool, cool. All right, so the Encore is going to go off. On call it. And he's going to take out... He's probably going to be taking out my uh, Amoga this turn. Probably with like a... Oh, it's a Dark Pulse. Is it taking my Extra Drill? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to live that. Uh, extra Drill. Dummy thick last time I checked. That Incineroar is now stuck uh, using Fake Out because he's L Encored. And we're going to go for it, chat. You ready? Discharge, boys and girls. EQ Discharge. It's been a hot minute since we've been able to bust out the big old EQ Discharge. It's time. It most definitely is time. He's going to withdraw the Incineroar, but does Incineroar want to eat an EQ and a Discharge? What is this? Rotom does not want to eat EQ and Discharge. Protect is very smart. I think we're going to be able to almost get this out. Uh, we have to be able to take out the Rotom, but I don't know how good Rotom actually is versus like... It's L Rotom might be able to live this, by the way. But actually, I don't think it can. Um, it's going to be able to eat this first EQ, but it can't eat the second EQ, and it has to be like scarfed. And I, I think we're at plus one speed, aren't we still? Because this Exodrill is like still pretty popping off. So are you Wikiberry or are you Scarfed? Oh man. So let's actually see how we're going to get this done. He, he was a berry! Chat, I told you it was going to be a berry. Is that a pinch berry? Just a citrus? I think if it's just citrus, I think we're fine. Alright, so he has Incineroar in the back, right? Able to use Intimidate, the best move in the game. I can Encore the Porygon, right? But I think he's going to read that and switch it out. So I think the best play is actually just to um, Air Slash that slot. I think it's actually a better play to just double Air Slash. Because he knows I'm going to Encore the Porygon. So I think I'm going to Air Slash that slot and go for a Brave Bird. It's better to Brave Bird because like it's better versus Incineroar. And it can one-shot the Rotom from here, I'm pretty sure. Let's go for it. My ally switch, yep. They're playing pretty well right now. We are playing pretty well. So Incineroar is actually going to get a really, really good Intimidate up into our Talonflame. But I still think Talonflame can actually take out the Rotom. Because Reason a Choice Band. Right now he's like, ha, you're weak. And I'm like, I'm not weak. Oh, wait. Uh, so next turn he's going to fake out. Ooh, that's actually really smart. Because the next turn he's going to fake out my Emolga. So I can't use Encore. So he's going to like fake out my Emolga. Okay. Good, it's a good amount of damage. I still think that's what we want to do, though. I still think you have to just go for a Brave Bird on this Rotom. It's resisted, I know. And I'm intimidated, I know. But, like, I'm banded. So, like, it's my only real option. Let's go for it! It's your only option! We play to our outs here! The big Talonflame popping the Brave Bird... 
Oh man, we almost did it. He didn't fake out me either. No way. No way. What if I used Encore? What if I get a flinch? Looks like a vested incinerator. Hydro, that can miss. Damn it, chat. We almost won. I wonder why I didn't just Thunderbolt. Uh, it's like Motor Drive's really... Motor Drive's a different move. It's very different. I mean, if he doesn't KO me here, I can actually just use Discharge forever. No! What? Oh, that's some bullshit. No, poor Morga. That's never lucky. I'm really surprised that he let himself get Encore looped like that. Like, I could've just Encored the Rotom. I could've just Encored the Rotom. But, uh... James is, like, the best player in the world, so what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? All right, time for a redemption match. Let's take our frustration out on this guy, man. James is so good, but you know what? We're gonna we're gonna win this guy. We're gonna win this one. Let's see. How do we actually want to deal with the, against this? I actually think Amoga is pretty pog. I think actually Amoga Pikachu is very fun here. Let's go Amoga Pikachu, and we'll show you guys what the team's supposed to do. We'll show you guys what the team is supposed to do. The big Amoga Pikachu. And uh, I do like Axodol here. Very, very good against Togekiss and Luxray. I think you kind of want Talonflame just to have that priority, uh, you know. Band of Talonflame, y'all sleep on it. Like, that's a, it loses Gale Weeks if you take damage. Yeah, it still has like 123 base speed. So it's actually like not that bad. If everyone's thinking Talonflame is like bad, y'all bad. Like, Choice Band Talonflame, I use that thing all throughout 2014. 2014, that whole year, I used so much banded Talonflame. And then in 2015, so much banded Talonflame. It's my personal favorite set to use on Talonflame. And you still kind of just keep the Tailwind on it. You saw in the first game of the day that, like, sometimes you got just Tailwind, you know, and that's that's the play. But being able to always come back where they have any sort of speed control up and just go for a huge priority banded 120 move, that's a complete, like, tempo switch, right? The, the meta is going to get all out of whack. And let's see, are you going for the double intimidate? Double, show me that double intimidate. That's one intimidate. Oh man, you're gonna be so sad. You're gonna be so sad. Oh man, he's look how sad he is. The double intimidate, and you know what? We're using special attackers. And you know what? It's gonna be even worse for him in like two seconds. In like two big ones, it's gonna be very not great for him because we're gonna be going for the biggest discharge. And you're like, that's a don't use discharge. There's a ground type over there. I know there's a ground type, but you know who's on our side of the field? Instead of looking what they have, look what we have. Play to our own strengths. We're gonna use discharge on our own Pikachu. And Pikachu has one of those really, really good abilities. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called Lightning Rod. It says uh, it draws an electric move, so it means it's not going to take it away from your opponent, but it's going to absorb the damage from the electric move. And then it's going to give you a boost to your special attack. And then once you have the boost to your special attack, all you got to do is go for the biggest max geyser you've ever seen in your life on this crocodile and just one-shot it out of existence. People think ground types are a good check. So electric types? Not in my house, all right? Emolga Pikachu, we're about to be flexing on these guys. The absolute massive flex. The only way this actually gets worked really hard is if this uh, Crocodile's like scarfed. And I don't think he's going for scarf Earthquake because he just switched in a poison type from his original electric type. Maybe he was switching out that Luke's Ray for like a flying type. Maybe I might be scared. Um, but I think we're gonna be in a pretty good spot. We're also using a 90 base speed timid Pikachu. So we're as fast as big Pikachu can be. Emolga going faster than Pikachu, popping the discard, discharge, giving us a plus one special attack, which means we're going to be massive. Even if it's a vested Crocodile, he's going to be in for not the best time. He is Scarfed, or I'm assuming he's Scarfed. I'm assuming he's Scarfed. I guess it could be a bit of a speed. I think Crocodile has a very similar base speed, but you know what? You're dead. You're gone. Actually, he's not Scarfed, right? He's not Scarfed. He's just full aggression because he, uh, our Emolga outsped the Crook. So, you know what? Sometimes you take a little bit of damage, right? Sometimes you take a little bit of damage. Uh, I think, what is Crookedal's base speed? I thought it was 85 or 90. I'm gonna look it up. Uh, Crook Odile. I didn't spell that very well. All right, let's see. Crookedile has a 92 base speed. You know, so even, even I learn new things every day. I thought it was 90. Like, I'm like, Psh, this thing has 90 base speed. It's terrible. And you know what? He's like, you know what? I'm not terrible. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. You're not terrible. Uh, let's see. Let's go for the biggest G-Max Volt Crash using the 140 base move. That's why we have the Thunder going for an even stronger one. We're going that's a plus two now. This Discharge is going to make us that's a plus two. And if you want to use Follow Me, guys, and also remember, I'm using the move called Discharge, which is the best move in the game. It's like a skull. It has a 30% chance to paralyze anything that it hits. And since it's hitting both opponents, that's two 30% chances to paralyze and just absolutely on the game he's going for the quick draw yo yo he's so good the big quick draw what are you gonna do what are you gonna do against that level 
of just masterful play. The quick draw slow bro. It's okay. He gets the crit too. I'm happy he decided to hit that instead of my boy Pikachu. So slow bro probably going to be taking the L here. The big bolt crash Pikachu. While it didn't outspeed the crocodile, it does outspeed Togekiss. Togekiss, Togekiss has 80 base speed. Pikachu rocking that big 90 going uh, automatically paralyzing everything that's on the field when you go for a Volt Crash. Even if that Togus was a ground type or something like that, it would have... Oh, and we and we get the para. Easy peasy. Now, what I want to send out... Now, I do know that there's a Luke's Ray in the back. There is a big old Luke's Ray in the back. I think what we're going to do is just go Talonflame. Watch, what we, watch how we do this here. I'm going to show, I'm gonna show you guys uh, that that's a plus one special. We're going to go Talonflame, and you're like, that's a don't send out Talonflame. He has a Luke's Ray. Watch out. Just watch. We're going to hit the Togekiss, and also, we're doing this to avoid the Intimidate. What we're going to do is we're going to U-turn on the Luke's Ray into our Excadrill. This is Pikachu's last turn. Dynamax is going to one-shot the Togekiss, and then uh, Pikachu's going to switch out for our Talonflame that we brought back, and then we're going to go for an Earthquake with an unintimidated Excadrill to one-shot his Dynamax Luke's Ray, which he's going to Dynamax. He's not going to Dynamax his Togekiss. Togekiss is going to take the biggest L to this Pikachu this turn. It's going to take the absolute biggest L. We're still at plus one. Show me that Dynamax Luke's Ray. You always got to be two to three steps ahead of everything, every single thing your opponent can do. And this is how you get there. This is how you get to that level. Is by talking yourself through it. Learn from your mistakes. You should be Dynamaxing that Luke's Ray. Don't make me eat. Don't make me put, like, a foot in my mouth. Because if you Dynamax a Togekiss, you're just going to lose it, right? If you Dynamax a Togekiss, you're just going to lose it. That's right. There's the Luke's Ray. I mean, Luke's Ray looks super dope if you, uh, super dope Dynamax. Let's see. Togekiss, are you using follow me? Doesn't really matter. Awesome. A little bit of chip damage in there. Looks like Togekiss is not using follow me, so we're going to bring in our Exodrill here. Also, Exodrill blocks electric attacks. It's more than avoiding Intimidate. It's more than being able to go for our Earthquakes with a partner that won't die if you Earthquake them. It's also avoiding electric attacks and having good defensive typing, good defensive synergy. The Volt Crash coming in, popping it off. Togekiss, this guy ain't never even heard of it. And then let's see what the Luke's Ray does. We know that your Luke's Ray is going to be going for a Max Lightning on my Talonflame slot. We know. We all know. Max Nuck? Hey, you know what? Oh, is he so good? Chat, wait, is he the best person? No, he, he nucked the Pikachu. You know what? Good for him, right? Look at that amazing play. Respecting the priority target. Going after the Pikachu, you'll love to see it. I'm surprised that actually KO'd. It's not stabbed. And I was Dynamaxed, right? Uh, looks like he just orbed. Yeah, I was going to talk about it. It's only way to do that. It was really off of the orb. But now... Now look at the situation you're finding yourself in. Now look at it. It's still currently raining. Otherwise, I would be definitely a lot more down to use a Flare Blitz. But I know one thing that we're using. It's called Earthquake from Exodrill, from a Life Orb Exodrill. And our Town Flame is avoiding the damage. Now let's see. Hmm. U-Turn is a 70 base move. This is a 120 and a 120. Now this is a 120 stab. Goes up to 180, cut in half because of the, uh, what is it? Because of the fact that he resists the damage. Same calc on here. It's cut in half because of the, uh, the rain. How many turns are left on rain, though? Two more turns on rain. I'm just going to go for Brave Bird, then. Because remember, I'm Choice Banded. I have to lock myself into something. And uh, these moves are stronger than U-Turn, which is a 70. So let's go. This should probably be doing about... Let's see. This is probably going to be doing about 10%. About 12 to 13. All right. I'll take that. Talonflame is still, like I said, an absolute threat. And this should be able to get the KO. And even if it doesn't... Even if it doesn't... I was going to say he had a life orb. He would have killed himself from there. But that's the power of our own life orb, right? You actually, We actually needed that life orb. And we actually need to do that exact sort of play to make it so we weren't intimidated by that Luke's Ray. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to get the KO. And that Max Knuckle would have definitely one-shotted us. So you know what? We played pretty well. We got our revenge match. And we got to show off some Emolga Pikachu. It doesn't get much better than that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this set of games with this team. Feel free to use the rental code. I just want to say about the rental codes. I'm only really going to be leaving my rental codes up for about three to four days. Because I'm making so many teams that I have to consistently replace them, right? I can only have five rental codes active at once. So every time there's a new one... Another one has to go away and vice versa. So, uh, you know, hopefully you guys can download them while you can. That's an incentive to immediately when you see a video, if it's a team you think you might want to use, download the code. Because if you guys still have the code, uh, even if I delete the team, delete the code, it's still in your game. So download all the codes you can. Hopefully you guys like this one. Let me know what you think about Amolga in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.